flight of the spruce goose. Do you think that Howard Hughes intended on flying that day? First, let me thank my video subscribers. You have given me reason to finally record my study. Hi, I'm Jim. I am an aeronautical engineer and I worked over 25 years in the gas turbine industry. Part of that time I analyzed the performance of new airliners. I am also a pilot with commercial and instrument privileges. I learned about this H-4 Hercules simulation when I visited the Evergreen Museum in Oregon. I have since obtained a copy of the U's flying boat manual and I adjusted this X-plane model to be as close to the design as I could down to the airfoil characteristics. November 2nd, 1947. Here we are taxiing out. I'm going to fly the H-4 in the simulator today. I'll use the X-plane simulator to fly several configurations that will highlight Mr. Hughes's actions of that day. I prefer the X-plane simulator because it requires inputting the aircraft dimensions and aerodynamic coefficients. No fudging. I have confidence that my simulation is close to the design flying characteristics of the H-4. But as everyone was wondering in 1947, will it fly? For this public demo, Hughes has the press on board his aircraft. I've tried to recreate the look of the H-4's cockpit. The instruments are in the correct arrangement and they have the right look. I did have to move the engineer's panel to the left side, however, because of the configuration of my computer screens. We'll continue taxiing out and then align ourselves into the wind for the first takeoff run. Howard makes two taxi runs first. This is the second run. I'm applying power and I'll taxi the plane up to 90 miles an hour. Hughes obtained the most powerful engine of the day, the pre-production 3,000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R4360. That's 4,363 cubic inches in 28 cylinders. He got them even before the B-29 program did. He needed eight of these engines to lift the load. The H-4 was large enough to carry two Sherman tanks, each weighing 54,000 pounds. Note that 20 years later, the design of the C-5 was also to carry two tanks. But the flaps were in the up position, and the plane stays on the water. Then Hughes orders the press off of his plane and he turns back into the wind to begin run number three. Note that I'm using the outboard engines number eight and seven to help swing this plane around and lining up with the wind. I did not see any provisions for water rudder in the flight manual. Give me 15 degree flaps, Hughes calls out to his flight engineer. I've lowered the flaps one notch and now we'll advance the throttles. Did you see that? I've lowered the flaps one notch.
advance the throttles. Okay, here we go. I'm assuming no payload today with 7,000 pounds of used test staff and instrumentation and fuel in two of the 14 tanks. I estimate the gross weight of the H4 today to be only 221,000 pounds, about half of the maximum design weight. We accelerate to 70 miles an hour and then we lift off. Well, that was easy. The plane practically flew off by itself. But I did have trouble keeping it at only 70 feet, though. Let's view it again from the observer boat. With the flaps down, we accelerate, and now we're flying. And so, in conclusion, first, Hughes was pressured by Congress and the news to justify his wartime expenditures. Second, this plane was close to flying at 90 miles an hour. I could feel it just at the top of the waves. Third, Hughes would have known what speed was going to be required to fly. He would have been familiar with the takeoff charts as he had continually taken part in this design, up to the point of causing delays. Fourth, Hughes asked the press to deplane. And fifth, Hughes calls out for 15 degrees flaps. This confirms that Hughes intended to fly this day. Okay, that's my theory on the Spruce Goose's first flight. In Chapter 2, I'll conduct an abbreviated flight test program to show the capabilities of the H-4. See you then. But one final demonstration. I'm going to demonstrate the lift generated by the H-4's huge flaps. I'll first accelerate to 70 miles an hour with the flaps up. Then I'll lower the flaps one notch and watch how easily this plane lifts from the water and then flies along. This plane has 1,404 square feet of flap area. That's as large as the entire B-17 wing. 